I will now talk about some of the risk factors for potentially developing macular degeneration. Before I do so, if you are finding this video informative and you have seen my other videos and you have also found them to be of interest, I would encourage you to please subscribe to my channel. Macular degeneration, as with lots of other conditions in medicine, has lots of known risk factors, but not one particular exact cause. Some of the things that will make you more likely to develop macular degeneration include, number one, your age, so we know that patients with macular degeneration typically tend to be over the age of 65. Number two, gender. So we know that macular degeneration is more likely to develop in females. Number three, we do know that certain genes will make you more likely to develop macular degeneration. Number four, smoking will greatly increase your risk of developing macular degeneration and smoking is something that patients can actually do something about. Number five, sunlight. We do know that patients who are exposed to UV light throughout their lives tend to be more at risk of developing macular degeneration. And finally, number six, your diet. We do know that if certain components are lacking within one's diet, such as leafy green vegetables, that can make one more likely to develop macular degeneration. Unfortunately, because we currently do not know the exact cause of macular degeneration, in some patients, they may not have any of the above mentioned risk factors, and they still may go on to develop macular degeneration. As previously mentioned, macular degeneration affects the central portion of our vision. So therefore, in patients' day-to-day -day lives, they may find that they struggle to see fine print when they are reading, they may struggle to see faces, and they may also be troubled terribly by glare. In some patients, they may also find that they start to experience distortion. Distortion is when basically straight objects and straight components of objects and things start to appear a bit wavy. For example, if one looks at the edge of a door frame and that door frame is known to you to be definitely straight, in the presence of distortion, that door frame may appear to be slightly wavy. In patients with dry macular degeneration, this waviness may appear and develop slowly over time. Importantly, in wet macular degeneration, this distortion can come on suddenly. In both types of macular degeneration, the central vision is affected. And remember, in the dry type of macular degeneration, this visual loss and deterioration is gradual, whereas in wet macular degeneration, it's sudden and typically profound. If patients are experiencing any of these symptoms, especially symptoms that could potentially indicate that they have wet macular degeneration, it is crucial that patients seek urgent medical and eye care advice. In order for macular degeneration, either the dry type or the wet type to be diagnosed, one needs to present for an eye examination, typically performed either by an optometrist or an ophthalmologist. Your family practitioner is unlikely to have the necessary tools in order to accurately and thoroughly assess your presenting complaints. When you present to your eye care professional to look into your symptoms further, certain tests will definitely be performed to help your eye care professional understand your symptoms and then to potentially diagnose macular degeneration. The first component of this will typically involve asking you to read the 
lowest possible line on the reading chart. A detailed and close look at the back of both of your eyes will then be carried out and typically this is done with the aid of drops. Usually simply from these three things which are your symptoms, the level of vision that you are obtaining and looking into the back of both of your eyes, it can be very clear as to whether you have either the dry or wet type of macular degeneration. However, sometimes the diagnosis is not as straightforward because the signs in the back of your eyes may be subtle. In such instances, other special tests and investigations will be needed. Two other investigations that patients may typically go on to have include optical coherence tomography or the abbreviated version is OCT and in addition to this test patients may also go on to have an investigation called FFA which is the abbreviation for fluorescein angiogram. An OCT scan will typically provide your eye care professional with an image of the back of your eye, particularly focused on the macular region. This can help your eye care professional to understand whether there is any fluid or blood within this region. Having an OCT scan is like having a photograph of the back of your eyes. This typically involves sitting close to a machine with your chin on the chin rest and your head against the headrest and the technician will then ask you to look at a particular target and after you have achieved this and the back of your eyes are in focus a picture will be captured. The other investigation that eye care professionals can use and this is typically carried out in the hospital setting is a fluorescein angiogram. An angiogram can provide very fine detailed information about the network of blood vessels that supply the back of our eyes in this particular case. What a fluorescein angiogram involves is a cannula or plastic tube is placed into one of our veins in our arms and after a green dye is injected within this vein the dye travels up to our eyes and as it does so images are captured of the back of our eyes in order to help us to understand the path of the dye and therefore the typical path of blood through these complex networks of blood vessels that exist within the back of our eyes. What this test allows the eye care professional to appreciate is whether there are any particular leaks in any of the blood vessels and it can also very clearly highlight any abnormal blood vessels that may be present which can happen in wet macular degeneration. I will now go on to discuss the treatment for macular degeneration. Unfortunately, at this moment in time, there is no treatment to cure dry macular degeneration. Some studies have proven and shown that certain vitamins and minerals, when taken in combination, can help to slow down the progression of macular degeneration typically in the more advanced stages of the disease. However, there is currently no evidence to suggest that taking these vitamins and minerals beforehand can prevent you from developing the condition in the first place. If appropriate, after your consultation with your eye care professional, typically a joint decision can be reached between yourself and the professional with respect to whether one should start and commence vitamin and mineral supplements. There are some very important considerations to factor in when deciding whether or not to use these supplements. One of them is crucially smoking because if patients consume these vitamins and minerals whilst they are actively smoking, there is known to be a risk of developing 
lung cancer. It is therefore crucial that you engage in dialogue with your healthcare professional prior to consuming these supplements. And therefore, I would always encourage you not to simply just order these products over the internet or to purchase them over the counter without initially seeking expert professional advice because there are no proven treatments to cure macular degeneration this does not mean that patients can't modify things within their lives to try and help their condition several lifestyle modifications can be beneficial for example stopping smoking staying as active as possible reducing exposure to uv light through wearing sunglasses and wide brim hats and finally ensuring that our diets are optimized to include plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables the treatment for wet macular degeneration is rather different after a diagnosis of wet macular degeneration is made the mainstay of treatment for this condition is the use of something called anti-VEGF which is injected into the eye that is affected. As abnormal blood vessels grow in the back of one's eye they release a compound called vascular endothelial growth factor. This compound will drive the formation of more abnormal blood vessels. The more abnormal blood vessels there are the greater the risk there is of bleeding and further loss of vision. Therefore, what the eye doctor will inject into your eyes is something to counteract this compound and hence the name anti-vascular endothelial growth factor. Prior to the injection of this compound within the eye, the eyes are anesthetized and numbed so that the patient does not feel any sharp pain. Your ophthalmologist will instruct you and guide you as to how frequently you need to have these particular injections into the eye. All of the possible side effects pertaining to this particular treatment option will also be explained to you by a combination of the ophthalmologist treating your condition and the specialist nurses that are typically involved in your care. Anti-VEGF treatments typically tend to work well when the condition of wet macular degeneration is detected early and therefore treatment can be commenced early. It is important to mention here that the aim of treatment is to try and prevent any further damage to the back of your eye through bleeding and the accumulation of fluid. And whilst one is aiming to try and reverse some of the visual loss that has taken place, in some patients, this may not always be possible. Being diagnosed with macular degeneration can be a terribly upset in time for both patients and their families. Concerns about functioning in one's day-to-day -day environment as well as concerns about driving and loss of one's independence. However, thankfully in most developed countries there are plenty of support mechanisms available to help patients. In most hospital settings now in the UK we have individuals and professionals known as eye clinic liaison officers who can not only listen to patients concerns in depth they can also signpost these charities and organizations that may provide great assistance to patients as there may be different viewers of this video in different parts of the world i would encourage you to carry out an internet search with respect to what organizations are available to help patients with macular degeneration. Some of the organizations that can help patients with macular degeneration in the UK, I will provide a link to them in the description below. As healthcare professionals and also as people generally, we tend to forget that behind our eyes, there is an actual living person. The reason I mention this 
is because we do know that in patients with macular degeneration it is not uncommon for these patients to have higher levels of anxiety and depression. These problems can arise for a multitude of reasons but consider this if one day one is able to drive and go shopping and perform one's day-to-day -day tasks and a short period after this one finds themselves to be in a position whereby they are completely dependent this loss of independence can not only lead to loss of the ability to do the above mentioned things but also it can lead to isolation which can then cause a spiral of negative effects further help and support within the community can also help patients to maximize and utilize their peripheral vision in order to try and undertake and complete their normal activities of daily living. Certain organizations can help with adjustments such as making things brighter, altering our environments, helping to improve contrast between objects and backgrounds and all of these measures are actioned to try and maximize what level of vision patients have. For patients with loss of vision through macular degeneration simple spectacles may no longer be of benefit and therefore these patients typically undergo a special type of assessment known as a low vision examination. As part of this examination, the visual needs of patients both at distance and at near are evaluated and if aids such as magnifiers are found to be of benefit to patients, then they can be prescribed and instructions on how to use such aids will also be provided during these consultations. One of the important organizations that typically tend to be involved in the management of patients with macular degeneration is social services. Social services can provide a fundamentally important role in ensuring that patients are safe to function in their home environments. On screen now are the names of some of the organizations and charities that patients with macular degeneration may be involved with. And finally, having macular degeneration does not automatically mean that you are illegal to drive. However, what drivers are required to do is to inform the DVLA of their diagnosis. In the first instance, patients should have their eyesight checked by a eye care professional. Your eye care professional can then advise you on your level of vision and whether you meet the driving standard for your particular country. In the UK, your eye care professional will also advise you to inform the DVLA of your diagnosis of macular degeneration. So that brings us to the end of this video on macular degeneration. I hope through watching this video, you have learned a bit about what the macula is, where the macula is, what macular degeneration is, what some of the risk factors associated with the condition are, how it is diagnosed and how it is treated. Thank you again for spending your precious time with myself watching this video learning about macular degeneration. I would be super grateful to you and thankful to you for your support in helping to grow my channel. You can do this by engaging in very simple acts which would have a massive impact such as liking, commenting and subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to also click the bell icon to stay up to date with all of my new releases. Until next time, remember, in order to completely understand what an individual is going through requires us to understand what is affecting them and how it is affecting them. With this knowledge, we can then truly understand how a disease can impact on so many different aspects of their lives.